I love this Blackstone story. <laughs> this is amazing. I'm going to sell you the Waldorf Astoria and bang, and then I'm going to buy it back and make a ton of money. Well, this was one of the really big stories for Blackstone over the last 10 years. Hilton, which is at the center of all this, which gets lost in this a little bit because the Waldorf is such a, a prominent name. I mean, Hilton is one of the most successful private equity deals ever. It's where John Gray, who was widely considered to be the successor someday to Steve Schwartzman, really made his name. There were some other deals, but Hilton was really the deal. And the Waldorf Astoria was sold to Ann Bang, and it's kind of chilling down there on Park Avenue. I walk past it every day, and there's nothing going on. Mm -hmm. So they may buy it back. But in fairness, after making a ton of money yeah, selling but, it, but how much money did they make? But there's a, well, we almost two billion. The, but there's a, a regulatory or government arbitrage here going on because Anbang would not be selling it necessarily if the Chinese right. government had to step in and said, "You guys are investing way too much money outside of China. Right. We don't like that. Shut it down." Well, and also keep in mind that this is very much tied to what's happening with H and A as well, which yep. is the other big uh, Chinese real estate buyer who was also a real estate buyer from Blackstone exactly. and bought a lot of the Hilton stakes. So, I mean, it's amazing this sort of shift, Terry, that China is having with some private equity assets. So I would tell you what's interesting is at BlackRock, we have a large alternative investment uh, business. And one of the things we talk about in conversations across private equity, across infrastructure groups, et cetera, and on the line, is that you have a lot of money. And so what's unique about this story is that you have a lot of money that's sitting on alternatives but doesn't want to actually sell basically because they need those higher returns. When we look at our, across our capital market assumptions and our public equity markets and public bond markets, those return numbers aren't high for the next five years or so. So you have a lot of institutional investors saying, okay, well, if I'm not gonna get it from the traditional world, I'm gonna stay with my alternative invest, investor assets. So that's probably some of this idea why potentially this company is looking to kind of buy back. Maybe they have cash from their investors that are looking to kind of say, can you put this to work? So that's just, I think this really interesting story here.